And let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, sometimes your will is hard to perceive. But help us, Father, to always follow your will as best we can, regardless where it leads, regardless how it tests our faith. But let us follow you where you lead as your Son did. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, four Gospels, find the one you like. I'll go with Mark this Mark. Okay. okay. I'll do John. John, okay. okay. I'll do Matthew, I guess. Okay. All right. It's about nine, you know, I have to realize this. It's about 9 a.m. standard time. Okay. April 7th, Friday, 30 AD. We're in Jerusalem. We'll start with Matthew 27, 31. Okay. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Okay, so the trial is done before Pilate, the second, second uh, trial. And they're going to, he's decided to go ahead and crucify him. Okay? So they take off the fun cloak and they put him back in his regular clothes. Right? Yeah. Anything surprising here? Nope? Okay. John 19, and because it breaks up, I'm going to do this myself, 16b to 17a. Sorry about that. They took Jesus, therefore, and he went out bearing his own cross. Okay, so what's that in here? Well, that he was carrying the cross. Carrying his cross. Okay. Luke 23, 32. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. Okay, so Luke has added that feature. So now we know that he's been given his own clothes back. He's been given a cross to carry, and he's going out with two other criminals. I have heard that it might only have been the cross. Cross beams. Yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. Pilate's order was carried out almost immediately. An execution squad of four soldiers was organized. This is a standard procedure. Since Jesus was to be crucified now, Romans decided to execute two other criminals at the same time. There had been some concern that Pilate was crucifying them during the Judean Passover, but Pilate believed that it sent a strong message and that there was a little chance of a riot because the Judean Jews would be busy celebrating their Passover. Good thinking, I think. Pilate knew what he was doing. Question or thought? Oh, I just, I hadn't thought about the uh, um, condemnation of the other two people before. I mean, they were just always heard, yeah, they were, they were condemned and they died on crosses beside him. But, yeah, we don't know any of the but details. But how, how did that work? Yeah. I hadn't considered it. I doubt that there was much of a trial at this point. Maybe it had already taken place and they were just waiting to be executed. Uh, I, no way to know. All but, he knows it wasn't Barabbas up there. Right. No, it was definitely but, not Barabbas. But they probably, I mean, they could easily have had legitimate trials, unlike the one Jesus had. Sure. I'm, in fact, I'm sure they did, but it would have been just in front of a magistrate or just in front of one yeah. person. Or two. But the comment from one of the criminals, you know, that they ah. were guilty, that... Yeah. So, th that... That's an interesting statement. Yeah. Okay, the squad gathered the three criminals to be crucified and assigned the 100-pound wooden crossbeam for each to carry. This is an example. Okay, it's not necessarily the case. Okay, that's a lot of weight when you've been beaten up. Yeah, I think so. It's a lot of weight when you haven't been beaten up. <laughs> the beams were tied to their shoulders, and then the criminals were lined up. That's three of them. They're all criminals. Question of thought? I don't know how they can walk with a hundred pounds on them. You struggle. You stagger. 
Well, it and depends on how badly you've been beaten up. You also have to realize that the people probably in that day and age were probably in better physical condition. A lot more manual Beca labor. Because of hard work, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, agree I mean, you that. think about women, you know, even today, 40 liters of water on their head is normal. You know, you ever try lifting 40 liters? You see 90-pound women in Africa doing it all the time. Takes two women to get it up on their head, and then away and they, they go. Stay firm and up, right? Yeah. There, you go. there we go. So they were, I think, in... They, I think their musculature was much stronger. I think yeah. they were used to hard work. Yeah. Then began the procession with Jesus as the most important criminal to be the first of the prisoners leading the procession. Now here he's got the full cross, because we don't know that it was just a cross beam or whether it was the whole thing. We just don't know. So I've given you a picture of each. <laughs> okay. I tend to believe it would be the cross beam, but that's just my opinion. Any question or thought? I don't think it matters much how much of the cross he was carrying. No, nope. either way, it's too much. Yeah. <clears throat> that's we'll find out. As the procession moved through the streets of Jerusalem, some people lined the way. Some were supporters of the religious leaders, and they verbally assaulted Jesus. Some had been followers of Jesus, and they cried with this injustice. Some shopkeepers and their customers were curious, while others who just happened to be walking down the street were forced to stop and wait until the condemned went past. It's a variety of all things that could have happened. They're leaving the fortress here, coming down the streets, coming to this location here, right outside the city walls. It's a nice place where the big roads are, and it's a perfect place to have your cross beam put on top of the thing. Crucify people, as an example. It's like putting up a billboard. You put it up in a place where folks are going to come in and see it. Yeah. So, there are all sorts of normal people, and this is a normal day, okay? Any questions? Normal doesn't sound right. Well, in those days, we know a crucifixion was a public Crucifixions display. Crucifixions happened frequently. And, and so they, people, people saw them. Yep, and that was the point. They're supposed to see them. Mm -hmm. This is going to happen to you if you don't toe the line and do what we say. Okay. Anything else? Matthew 27, 32. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. Okay, what's been added? The name of the fellow and the fact that he carried the cross. Right. Some guy from Cyrene, that's in North Africa, okay, over near Libya. Uh, his name is Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross for some reason, pressed into service. Okay? Which makes us assume that Jesus couldn't manage. Correct. Well, That's according to Matthew. So the deal is, they want him to survive long enough to be hung on the cross. Correct. I mean, that would be a, a disaster political disaster if he didn't make it to the cross so they couldn't display him. <laughs> and you don't want to carry him. He's got, yeah. You just want to get him there. And he's nasty. He's, he's been all beaten up. He's bloodied. He's, you don't want to touch that. Not really. No. You whip it. Kick yeah. it. Come on. I'm motivating you. Let me kick you again. <laughs> yes, it does. Luke 23, 26 it reads, when they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, coming in from the country, and placed on him the cross to carry behind Jesus. What have you added? Seized. And well, they, they grabbed him. Tells you it was not voluntary. He had no choice. Right. Not voluntary at all. Can okay. you imagine how he felt? How might he have you, felt? You mean Simon, or you mean... Simon. Simon. Okay, yeah. Just, I mean, I'm just coming in here. What you know to be suddenly put in a position of participating in this <laughs> whole horrible thing. And he's from out of town, to say yeah. the least, out of the country. Yeah. That's probably why they grabbed him. He looked like a foreigner. He probably looked strong enough. Yeah. And uh, from Cyrene, it's North Africa. 
So he's coming in. Why would he come into the town even? Why would he be there? Well, maybe he's coming for Passover. Maybe he's coming for Passover. Okay? So he's coming in from the country, and he gets to carry this cross of Jesus. Anything else? Presumably at this time, he would have no idea who Jesus is. Very good. He's just coming in. Okay? Mark 15, 21. Let's see what Mark adds. And they compelled the passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. Okay, so, go ahead. Obviously, everybody, know, everybody knows who Alexander and Rufus are. So uh -huh. they, when did they know this? Well, later. Later? Go ahead. But everyone that they're writing the letter to would know, everyone that Mark is writing to, uh -huh. or whoever's edited it, would know who this Alexander and Rufus were, and then this was their, his, their dad. Okay, the, that would have been, they would have been familiar probably with Alexander and Rufus, uh, and realizes that. So Mark is saying this for a particular reason. He knows these people are probably of the faith. At least right. at this point in time. At that point later, right, when uh, after Simon is done here. Um, this would be about, oh, 30 years after the, the crucifixion. I mean, it's like 60 years, uh, 60 AD. So they have Alexander and Rufus who are, in, Rufus who are important in We'll call it the church. That's not an appropriate phrase at this point. But we'll call it that. Um, and this is his father who did the cross carrying. So it's, this really seems to have affected Simon. Something happened to affect him. Well, and the and the writer of Mark saying this is the father of Alexander and Rufus tells me his information may have come directly from Alexander and Rufus. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Now, the names are interesting as well. Alexander, it's not exactly a Jewish name, is yeah. it? No, it's Greek, isn't it? Yeah. And in northern, in Cyrene, there was a large Roman um, influence. So these are... You mean Greek? Yeah. I mean Greek, Greek and Roman, both. It's kind of the same basic thing. Yeah, culturally. It's Gentile. Um, so it's kind of interesting, we don't know much, we don't know anything about them, but they were known at the time that their father carried the cross. Okay. Any question or thought? Yeah, I wonder if once Jesus was on the cross, I wonder if Cyrene, if, uh, excuse me, if Simon hung around. I don't think he's using the word hung around. Well, <laughs> that's a bad pun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Sorry, I you know. <laughs> couldn't resist it. I wonder if he wasn't staying around. Yes, yes. yes uh, at, at least hear from people, who was this, what's going on? I'm sure he would have found out at some point what, what yeah. he had participated in. Um, he may, well, okay, anything else? <laughs> yeah, I'm around. <laughs> that's, that's really bad. I couldn't have I done that if I wanted no. to. No. <laughs> As the procession left the seat of judgment in the public square west of the fortress of Antonia's western gates, it became quickly obvious that Jesus was far too weak. The guard had not been sufficiently careful. Jesus staggered repeatedly, and the wood gouged his exposed muscles. Jesus was kicked to encourage him to get up and keep moving. But though he tried, and did in fact go a short distance, he eventually fell down and could not rise. That's kind of what we're familiar with. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Any question? Makes sense. Thank you. I tried for making sense. Now let's find out what happens. So one of the guards picked the man from the crowd, who looked strong, to carry the crossbeam of Jesus to the site of the crucifixion, execution. They happened to pick a foreign Jew, who had come to Jerusalem for the festival. 
from the North African city of Cyrene, west of Egypt. They'd be more in the Libyan area. He had rented a place outside the city and had come into Jerusalem today to worship at the temple. Sounds reasonable. Mm -hmm. We don't know any of that. Yeah. Okay. We, we, we also don't know if his family was of age to have been with him, if he had a spouse. No idea. No nothing. Okay. He's an enigma. Okay. Let's go on then. The soldiers untied the crossbeam from Jesus, and Simon picked it up and joined the procession right behind Jesus. What have you got? Well, one could consider it an act of mercy, even though it was forced, but uh, to make it where Jesus could continue on. Yes, merciful to Jesus. Yes. Not, not so much for Rufus, yeah. <laughs> for uh, Simon. Okay, noted in this picture anyway, Jesus still has his crown on. We don't know, but we assume he did. Okay, and Simon is probably a dark-skinned person. Would have been very humiliating for him. Oh, absolutely. To be thrust into this procession of criminals. Yeah, I, I can just hear the Romans going, Who would like to volunteer to carry this cross thing? I don't think he'd get many volunteers. Okay? That's why they had to force him. Okay? And yeah, all of a sudden he looks like he's the criminal. So yeah, I can imagine he was not happy with that. And being from out of town. Out of, out of country, Judea, yeah. He would undoubtedly have absolutely no idea who Jesus is. Maybe not. Maybe so. We're not sure. He may have heard something in the in, as he's walking into the town, into Jerusalem. He may have heard something about it. We don't know. So I'm going to assume he heard something. Solomon probably had a vague sense of who Jesus was, but little suspected that this random selection would radically change his life as well which it did. The Lord's will. God willed this. This is a spirit moving. To pick him as his sons, Alexander and Rufus, Rufus were an example of that. They became part of the church. A so-called church. Okay? A follower. Okay? Anything else? Luke 23 27 to 31 reads, And following him was a large crowd of the people, and of women who were mourning and lamenting him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, stop weeping for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the tree is green, what will they happen when it, dry, when it is dry? What is Luke talking about? What is Jesus talking about? Well, this would supposedly be, or apparently be, looking back on it, um, prophecy of what was coming for Jerusalem. Okay. Well, or for Christians in particular, that not yet known as Christians. Correct. Not known followers. As Messianic Jews. Yeah. But but when you think about green, green is is things are going well. They're yeah. fresh. They're live. Right. When they're brown, okay, it's a drought. It's dried up. Everybody's hungry. There's death. Yeah. Yeah. So when things are going well, they're still crucifying Jesus. How bad is it going to be when things are not going well? 70 AD was 70 bad. AD is when this is being predicted. This is Luke maybe seeing that. Um, the destruction, you know, better not to have ever had a baby. They're going to be slaves or murdered or whatever. This is a look into the future, it is what most people will think of that, and I think it's reasonable. Anything else strike you here? Simon?
Simon is carrying the cross, Jesus is walking in front, okay, and the women are expressing their, their mourning and lamenting. What did, what did the women do in those days for mourning and lamenting? What would that be? That loud wailing. Uh huh. They're making loud sounds of sorrow. Okay? And Jesus is concerned about who? Well, clearly he shows, he shows uh, uh, an interest in them. In them, first as, of As all. opposed to his struggles. Correct. Jesus is still concerned about others. And he's telling them, warning them of what's to come. Okay? Uh, anything else you see? Okay, here we go. Most of the people were sorry that the Romans were executing these Jews. The local women expressed their anger with loud cries and other physical displays, such as hitting themselves with their hands. Jesus became aware of these expressions of sorrow and tried to reach out to them. One of the things that gets me about this, too, is, is uh, you said most of the people were sorry the Romans were executing these Jews. We know there were Romans there, but they probably didn't realize it was their own leaders that had, had uh, Correct. organized it. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure they were not being very visible. So yeah. that people would hold the, the blame Romans, the Romans guilty. Yeah, blame the Romans. Exactly. Everybody is smarter than we think normally. They, they, they would not have been standing there. This is a Roman execution and people have this conquering power over them. Oh no, they hate the Romans. Well, you know, Jesus has been condemned. The Romans are doing the execution. Right. Yep. They don't have any reason to be there anymore. Now they can... Nope go back and start preparing for the Passover. That's right. It's done. The job is done. <clears throat> we don't have to worry about this guy anymore. Very good. Anything else strike you? <clears throat> As he walked past them, he tried to warn them. My suffering is ending. Cry for Jerusalem. A time is coming soon when you will wish for death to release you from the suffering. That's my reinterpretation of what he said. Any question or thought? I think that matches the scripture. I think it does. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Matthew 27, 33 is the same as Mark 15, 22, basically. So let's read Matthew 27, 33. Okay. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means a place of a skull. Thank you. What does this tell you? Well, it's been used for this before. Okay, that's interesting. Why, would, why that... would you name it that if it weren't uh, a place that uh, okay. would have that reputation? Why might you name a place the place of the skull? My if it wasn't for just because a lot of crucifixions happened there. My understanding was there was, it was by a large boulder that had kind of the shape of a skull. Mm -hmm. yeah, there is actually a place, a tourist place in Israel uh, called Warren's to where you look at a, there's a cemetery on top and there's a hill face and there's holes in there and it looks like a, at the moment, it looks like a skull. Just Curious, that's all. So it could look like one, it could be a place, right? who knows? But it's called Golgotha. Well, the thing is, if the Romans are crucifying people on a relatively regular basis, they have their favorite spot. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I agree with you there. The John 19, 17b, sorry, I'll pick this one up too. To the place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. So all John has added is the fact of what? Where it located. That the language is Hebrew, that Golgotha is a word from Hebrew meaning the place of the skull. Nothing spectacular. Okay, here we go. Jesus led the convicted through the gate in the west wall just north of the three towers near the palace of Herod. 
The gate is here. If you look over here, this is where Antonia is. The port. And they've come down to the city, they'll come out through this gate here, uh, from behind these three towers. This is where Jesus was supposed to walk across the swimming pool, back over here to the right. And so the, all the rest of it is going to be farther off to the right. Yeah. Correct. All the, all the palace of Caiaphas and all that stuff is off this way. And the roads are on this side of it, right? Correct. This is coming out of the city, right here. Okay. This is coming out of the city. Okay. And those two roads. Okay. And then the roads will come here across it, and they come in there. Okay. To the site where the crucifixion would occur. The place was called Golgotha or Golgotha, the place of the skull, which was the site of a rock quarry. So as you come out from the fortress, you walk through the streets, you come out through the gate to this rock quarry just outside the city. And gosh, I wonder if that is maybe something that looks like a skull. I don't know yet. Let's find out. Golgotha was at the northern extension of the valley of Henan, that it served as a city dock. I mean, that's very important, believe it or not. Okay, here's a skull, and this is a quarry where rocks have been cut out for city use. All right, this is the northern extension going this way on the valley of Henan. It comes up here, the city dock. Okay which later became termed as Hades, or hell, because of the constant fire in it that was producing smoke, and it was a real garbage dump, and it was pretty ugly. And later we'll confess that Jesus went where? Sent into hell. Into hell. Into Gehenna, or into the dump of Hanan. Okay? This is where he will be executed. He descended into hell, is the phrase often used. We'll see. Okay, any question or thought? All right. There are traditionally 14 stations of the cross. These are events that occurred between the time when Jesus condemned to the time his body is placed in the tomb and are found along the Via Dolorosa. Okay, this is church tradition. If you were to go to Israel and want to walk in the path of Jesus with the cross, you would go through these 14 locations. Okay? This is by church tradition. Question or thought? Well, I grew up with every church that I was a part of had these stations of the cross uh, depicted on the walls of the church. Interesting. And annually in most of those churches uh, during Holy Week, right. you would have a, um, like a worship service, but you would go from one place to the other and they would say this happened you here. You would and process then that, from and then one this. to the other. Yes, yes. Okay. This is the first one. Jesus condemned to death in the Antonia courtyard. Okay. This is a group of believers who are beginning that process. And so into this courtyard is where you would find the first station. So that's where we're going. We're going to see the 14 stations. The cross is laid on Jesus. This is the, the, the chapel of the flagellation, flagellation doorway. This is the doorway to the chapel where Jesus was had his skin removed. Any question? These are the places you would stop if you were going to re to follow the steps of Jesus. Jerusalem. Yes. Jesus falls the first time. This is the doorway. You can see him up above. Okay. This would be the third step, the third stage. Jesus meets his mother, and this is the doorway there. Now, that's not in the scripture, but it is in church tradition, okay, that his mother was there. Okay. 
Simon of Cyrene takes the cross. This is the doorway in front of that spot where they say Simon was told to take the cross. Now when you say doorway, are all of these uh, religious institutions, what are they? They're all identified as the location where this event may have yeah, occurred. But, but were these just doorways or were they buildings? Or? Well, uh, this is a doorway. You'll be chapels in certain places. Uh, there'll just be symbols in other places. It's okay. kind of hard to say what is actually here. But usually it's a doorway into something. Okay. But that might not have been there. Probably wouldn't have been there. It would not the have been in there at the time. No. This is church tradition. Okay. Veronica wipes Jesus' face. This is the altar inside a building here. Okay. And the cloth she wipes his face with is a sacred relic, etc., etc. Okay. But this is that stage you would stop at. Jesus falls the second time, as you can see here. This is the altar inside, where you can stop where he fell the second time. And he doesn't say that anywhere, but that's okay. It's tradition. So presumably all of these things would have been figured out and the things made sometime after 300. Correct, when, after when, uh, Constantine's, Constantine's mother, yeah. um, when she came, what was her name? Hel Helen. Or Helen, Helena. Helena. When she came and she went and found all these spots, this was a tradition that had been held for a couple, 250 years or whatever. They figured out where these events occurred. And they have been tradition ever since. We don't know what really happened. This is a church tradition. Jesus and the women of Jerusalem. It's just a symbol on a wall. That this is where he said to them, don't worry about my suffering, you're going to suffer. Jesus falls the third time. Here's the chapel. Now they're starting to get colorful and fancy. Okay? The third time he fell. Well, I have a problem with that because he's already handed the cross off to Simon. Why would he be falling? But maybe he did. We don't know. But this is church tradition. Jesus is stripped of his garments. Okay. This is just outside of a chapel. Okay, you're going in here. Uh, where he will be crucified. Doesn't look like a hilltop or, a, or Golgotha. But this is the location they feel. This is where that rock was the Golgotha thing, where he was actually crucified. Jesus is crucified. Here's the altar inside of that building. Where you see he's laid out and is being crucified. That's his mother. That's Mary, I think. Which one of them? She is prominent in a lot of these well, because it's Roman Catholic. Because of the Roman Catholic tradition. Okay. You can also bet that she probably wasn't very close in real life because the Romans would have uh, run people away if they were too close. She wouldn't get too close, but she yeah. would have been there. Yeah. So is Mary Magdalene. Okay. They were there, some of the women. The guys, <laughs> they would have been very nervous about this. Jesus dies. Here's the altar where that station is. Over the thousands of years, people have offered up their sacrifice of things for the altars, and that's why they get so decorated. Okay? Um, it's a personal thing. So they get these fancy places that, not like the Protestants tend to prefer, you know, oh, there's the rock. That was not true of the Orthodox or the Romans, Roman Catholics. Um, they wanted to take the feelings that were offered by the people 
and let them express themselves in this kind of way. It's just a different way of looking at it. This is the altar. Jesus there has died on the cross. You can see him hanging there. Jesus' body is removed from the cross. Here's that altar at the 13th station. And again, Mary. And finally, Jesus' body is laid in the tomb. Here's that altar, okay, uh, where the tomb was theoretically below this area, below the altar. And now we don't have to go there and see it for ourselves. Correct. With all the crowds. <laughs> Correct. We, we don't have to go through that. Okay. Any questions or thoughts about the 14 stations or about this procession of Jesus from the fortress to the cross, to Golgotha? He's not yet, this is actually in front of where he was about to happen. That will happen next time we get together, Jesus will be crucified. Okay? Any questions or thoughts up till now? Well, just to me, in my mind, um, when something is of great importance, like this hollowed ground would have been, um, I personally would like to see it preserved as opposed to covered up. But that's just me. You're a Protestant. What can I say? <laughs> I would agree. That I would prefer to have it natural state so we can see what it really was like. <clears throat> but other people have a strong, overwhelming desire to respond in their emotion and in their faith as a sacrifice and make it prettier, you might say, or something. I don't know how best to put it. Okay? Any question, thought, or comment? Okay, the next time we get together, we will see the crucifixion of Jesus.